Welcome, you are listening to Ladies Who Genre, a podcast book club for ladies and not ladies who like to genre now and then. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm your other host, Noelle. This is not going to be a spoiler-free podcast, so if you haven't read this episode's book and are sensitive to spoilers, go ahead and pause it now and come on back when you've had a chance to read it. Trigger warning, this book we're about to discuss was written in the 90s and is set in New Jersey. (laughs) It's troublesome as heck. (laughs) So, you know, yeah, just be aware. It's full of misogyny, mildly questionable racist comments between characters, and generally is not in line with current thinking. If you're easily offended, this book may not be for you. Uh, Also, someone gets blown up in a car and someone else gets raped, but you don't see the rape. So Yeah, but it is definitely disgust. Yeah. yeah, And disgusting. Yes. But anyways. And violent. So (laughs) what what are we (laughs) discussing today? We are discussing One for the Money by Janet Ivanovich, which is a book that was written, like I said, in 1994, I believe it was released. Some places have 94, 95. It was made into a Catherine Hagel movie at one point. Have you seen it? I think I saw it and I think it was completely unremarkable <laughs> because I don't remember it at all. Perfect. <laughs> this this series is really long lasting though. It has 31 books in this series actually. It has 26 numbered books. So they go one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready and four to go. And then it goes on and on and on up to 26. And then there are five holiday special edition books randomly starring another hunky boy. So there are 31 books in this and they are still being published. So this is an ongoing series, which I think does get less problematic as it like it moves with the times. So if you are reading along with it, it's fine. I just I happen to be a person who read them in the 90s. And at the time I was like, yeah, this seems like New Jersey. And I didn't think anything of it. And going back and rereading it now, I'm like, oh, that doesn't hold up. Yeah, (laughs) which I mean, is the case if you listen to any or watch, I suppose, any books, to TVs, shows, movies, whatever, you know, yeah. all set in yes. various time periods, you'll notice some very problematic things. Yeah. Uh, and this was not spared. That, right. That problem, unfortunately. Yep. But wah, anyway, wah, wah. it's still a fun book. So let's talk about it. What are you drinking to go along with today's chat session? <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking an ice cold Corona beer with lemon in nice. the bottle, perhaps with a little sand on the bottom. It, it, no. Clean the sand off your bottle, madame. (laughs) No, it it gives it a little vacation-y feel. Uh, This book is described very often as like hot and humid. So like the thing I like to drink when it's hot and the only time I like to drink that drink is when it is hot and humid. How about you? Yeah, it is a really perfect hot weather thing. Also like uh, not just hot weather, but also if you're out doing yard work or other like physical labor in the hot weather, it just... yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be <laughs> uh, sweaty. I'm having, yeah, it, it just goes well with that. Uh, I'm having a Red Hook IPA, but really any IPA would, would do for this. It's um like this book, not for everyone, but you know, it can be a little bit tasty once you get past all of the terrible bitterness. Yeah, that's why I don't like IPAs. I think I, I'm not a bitter person. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've definitely gotten used to it. And uh, this book, I don't know that I'm going to get used to it, but we'll talk about <laughs> it. It's fine. Yeah. So how you been recently, Morgan? You I am good. Things? I have been doing what feels like nothing but packing for forever, but in reality, it's only been a few weeks, I guess. But we're getting there. That that slow task that is packing up all of your earthly belongings one piece at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't envy you that task. When's I like- the last time you moved? Uh, I moved into this house eight years ago at this point. Is that right? Uh, No, seven years ago. Seven years ago. And I moved our entire house while my husband was working because at the time I was also off work and I was like, I can do this. But we lived in a um, fairly small house and I am uh, prodigious with busy work. If given like Mm -hmm. a focal and a deadline, I'm really good with deadlines. I'm terrible at, at everything <laughs> uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for deadlines like just, gosh nothing would get done my friends well just so everyone knows like what i'm looking at because i morgan and i look at each other while we're doing this but like i am looking at an absolutely empty room and a microphone and a morgan so yeah she's doing a good job <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's been good it does have a very productive feel yeah you know what i mean it's kind of like crossing things off of a to-do list yeah as you cross things off, like your list gets smaller and smaller, yeah. basically. It's literally the same thing in my house. The more things I take out of the house, mm-hmm. it becomes very clear what's left over. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I'm also a mad purger. Like I love the, I feel like a little, you know, those little rodents that have a den and then they like take all the stuff in their den and they just shove it out the hole <laughs> and then they have a clean den and they go lay in their brand new nest. Like that's so me. I'm so excited about that stuff. Like that's my jam. So like I love cleaning stuff out. Like spring cleaning is my, my like drug of choice. I love it. Yeah, no, it has been good to, like, as you pack, get rid of things like, you know, what? Hmm, I haven't touched this in five years, I yeah. probably don't need it. Or this is old and dry and not like paint, like old okay. I craft like... supplies. <laughs> yeah, everything should probably be dry. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, things that should not be dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I man, I would I would love coming up there. Like if we were in the middle of a pandemic, I would have packed your entire house while you were Aww. sleeping. Yeah, I love doing that. It's so much fun. And Although- I would have absolutely let you because I'm a lazy <laughs> bitch. Um, but it, it was nice having a book to listen to while I packed. Like that that just makes things so much more pleasant. Although um, um I, I I don't know about this one. <laughs> okay, so Morgan hates it. Is what I'm getting out of this. <laughs> you guys can all click off now. <laughs> uh, do you want to give us give us some opening? Yeah. In Stephanie Plum's opinion, toxic waste, rabid drivers, armed schizophrenics, heat, humidity, and hydrocarbons are all part of the adventure of living in New Jersey. And that is basically this book. (laughs) I I don't want like half of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In my experience of living anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, Not into it. Yeah. Anyway, so we, I guess if we kind of give like a super basic overview slash what's what's the back of the cover called not the summary because they're not giving away the whole plot but it's like a teaser yeah yeah so like the the teaser if you will is we have a main character stephanie plum who's been laid off of her job she's been job hunting unsuccessfully she's running out of money she's rapidly reaching the oh oh crap i need money now yeah yeah (laughs) and this somehow ends up with her being a bounty hunter bondsman person her cousin is a bail bondsman and her mom sends her over because she lives in this town that she's lived in her whole life. So she like knows literally everyone. So it's just what happened. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, yeah, totally reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> and so like the book is definitely all about her dealing with a bunch of different uh, more or less, lots of less unsavory boys. people. Boys. Mostly a boys. A lot of boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not all of them. There's definitely some no. some lady folk. But not, uh, most I of think the ladies aren't that unsavory, positive. though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're hookers, yeah. but women of the yeah, night, but like they're said, positive. Back in the 90s, they're totally positive. Actually, Lula, yeah. because, Lula, who's one of the the prostitutes in there. Uh, do we not say prostitutes anymore? We say sex workers. Is that the new term that we're supposed to use? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the one of the two sex workers in this is Lula, and she becomes a main figure in this book series. Like, she joins the eventually the agency the bail bondsman agency and is actually Mm. like stephanie's partner in crime so that's pretty cool imagine lula well actually it's really hard to imagine lula because she's not that well described in this book other than she's like a larger black lady who is also you know a sex worker but she's hysterical like lula is the heart and soul of this book series all right i'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get more of that now but i I get it like every series like this has to have Mm -hmm. like like two three four maybe opening books that are a little bit terrible as they get the ball rolling just in both <coughs> yeah i that is literally <laughs> exactly my next thought <laughs> yeah i mean just in Files hooks you better than this did though yeah, yeah. magic helps yeah it honestly yeah. does yeah um yeah so oh gosh do i that is kind of the premise of the book but i i very nearly Hmm. How do I put this? If I wasn't listening to this book for the sake of this podcast and like knowing that I was then going to discuss it with you afterward, mm-hmm. I might have quit after the first like chapter or maybe yeah. two chapters. Yeah, I can understand that. Like, fully. like there's a scene where she talks about a sexual experience she had as a very young child. I don't know if they say the age, but like she's clearly a child. Yeah, she's like eight or nine, I think. Like, yeah, it's like second grade. Yeah, and. I I have very mixed feelings about this because I think that sexual ex- exploration is something that children absolutely engage in. It's part of the experience of growing up. I get that, totally understand. I don't know that I want to read about it as the introduction to a character. Okay, that's fair. And it's yeah. it the way the scene is written, it it almost feels like it's trying to be quirky and funny. Yeah. Mhm. 
And I am not into that. So let me just put into perspective that um, I did read these in the 90s. This is like, in fact, the last time I read this book was in the 90s, possibly 1995. At the time, that was quirky and funny. So these books actually took off at the time because of basically this book. So I have the advantage while reading this of the hindsight of remembering the zeitgeist that this was written in and therefore can like suspend my zenial slash millennial need for political correctness on it a little bit more yeah. than probably most people. But I think anyone rolling into this series who is 35 or younger is going to be like, what the heck? <laughs> I think that's easier to do when it's a much older book, you know, when it's yeah. mm-hmm. either completely like fantasy or it's clearly written in like Victorian or before mm-hmm. and you have some super questionable yep. attitudes, character scenes, whatever. Yep. I feel like it's so much easier to be like, oh, okay, like I don't yep. like this. This is problematic, mm-hmm. but I can get that this was written before our thing, our opinions on things. But because so much of what is in this book feels very modern, it's harder to ignore i think yeah i was i would agree with that for sure i guess the thing to me is this book doesn't feel modern at all because she does things like has to look on a map yeah she thinks a car phone is crazy and remember 100 percent uses a a phone book to try and and hunt down a person and a phone booth like yep yep. there is no cell phone involved in this there is a car phone and the only reason that someone has a car phone is because they're a cop in this book and i remember my mom had a car phone and it was like this giant block they had to like get bolted into the car and it was it was crazy and it had it actually had a cord it wasn't even a cordless thing it was like it still had the coily cord and uh, uh and i remember the the character kept making a big deal like you better not be running up yeah calls on my phone whereas uh-huh. now that's obviously not an issue. that's not another thing yeah so there are things about it for me that like actually i liked reading it about it being in the 90s because i'm like oh yeah this is like i graduated high school when this book came out and so i was like oh i remember that like i didn't have a cell phone until well until i was in college um and even then that had like a minutes situation involved Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was very bad like i was not allowed it was for emergencies yeah that's part of the the charm for me was actually that this does feel old but it's only 25 years it doesn't feel old enough Enough, to excuse some of the really questionable things and i I get that it is yeah, because truly, the attitudes on certain things can change in a matter of ten years, five years, one year. I mean, imagine where we were a year ago today. Like mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter hadn't happened. I mean, it had happened, but not to the level it did last summer. And like the amount of people who have like become um, awakened to the the plight of like racism in America and stuff is like astronomically higher than it was one year ago today. Mm-hmm. So like you know. Eh. I don't know. Anyway, I have an advantage here is what I'm saying. And and I it's really interesting hearing it from the perspective of someone who hasn't read it and yeah. maybe didn't peak in the 90s in the same way I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I very much get it. Yeah. Like, reading it, I understood what was yeah. happening, but still didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to make you like it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't have that uh, nostalgic advantage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've never watched Friends, but yep. I've heard people recently talk about rewatching it and going, ooh, that, ooh, no, like various bits and bobs that didn't age well with the series. And I bet that if I were to watch that now for the first time, I would probably find it severely questionable. Absolutely. Uh, I was trying to watch Buffy again the other day with someone who hasn't seen it yet and who's, you know, 10 years younger than me. And I was like... Oh, okay. This is going to hurt too. <laughs> <laughs> Although I still love it. Like I still love it. So I, you know, I definitely, I definitely think this is not a millennial book. Let's just say that this is a Gen X book for sure. Morgan's just shaking her head at me with like disgust <laughs> about this book. Like that's no, all she has no, to say. <laughs> it's fu- uh, like, I get it. I do. Mm-hmm. I just, it's I not gonna wish make you it like was it. different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a speed round question about that. So you can answer that later. <laughs> You, you mentioned that it was kind of fun to reread it and it had the feel of the time yeah. like, and that was cool. Are there any other things that you thought were just like interesting, you know, bits that you noticed you went through? The thing that I really like about these books in general is that they are candy. I mean, in some ways it was like how I reacted. IPA. To re- <laughs> I- IPA? 
Yeah, so. not candy. They're not sweet. They're bitter. Uh, not full for you, <laughs> but they're not for me. They are like candy. They're fluffy. I'm going to keep complaining. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um, I believe I've had several episodes where I just bitch through the entire thing. So this, <laughs> this is Morgan's episode. This is how I'm advertising this episode. <laughs> Perfect. Come here, Morgan, bitch. So yeah, for me, they are fluffy candy like things because they were a remind me of when I was you know 18 and cute. I, I and, can get that. Yeah, yeah. and that's fair. and they're funny. They're fun. Um, they do get better as the series goes on for sure, but we're not talking about the series. We're talking about this one book. It's a quick read. It's not stressful. There's some ugh things that happen in it, but at the same time, like I'm not that emotionally invested in anybody. This is not like a deep, dark heart situation, <laughs> you know, like I'm not stressed out about space things. So mm-hmm. like, you know, I did like that about that in this book. So those things what did you like about this book you have to have something you liked i did like uh i liked and hated the like main bad guy person uh ramirez you liked him so i liked him as a villain oh, i thought man. he was a, yeah he he was creepy as all get out mm-hmm. he for the listeners who haven't read it yet he's like a boxer that she goes to get some information from and has the biggest attitude and the biggest like I am literally going to sexually assault you the second I can. And he just says it out loud to her face. Uh, essentially. And in a full of a room full of people who are just kind of like, yep. whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, he's, how do I put this? He's that bad guy that he isn't going to put a curse on you in a magical, like, oh, you can ignore it kind of way. He's a bad guy in a, this is a believable everyday thing that could happen to you you could find somebody who decides that they are going to attack you it's gross i mean you hear about it in the book but none of it is actually like while it's happening you don't experience any of the rapes like you just you see the Which aftermath I, I am incredibly thankful for yes that, it is- that is my least favorite thing of any book is to yeah. graphically decide describe yeah. it you don't need to Right. You don't need so, to ever, ever. I can appreciate that even though they have this character, this villain that is wholly and completely unforgivable, unredeemable, realistic. Uh, that's why I said like I kind of like slash hate him. <laughs> yeah. He's well written. Uh, oh, yeah. Like he's terrible. He gives me a uh, Umbridge vibes. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a- terrible, terrible person. And you cannot get away from him. Like you just yeah. cannot get away from him. He, he will has find resources. you. Yeah. He has time and intent fucking creeper remember how i just said this book was light and fluffy and a super easy read okay so that is going on during it but See, i don't believe you that's why <laughs> i don't take it that i mean i i mean i take rape as seriously but i don't take this book very seriously because it's like also the thing about the whole thing and this is i'm gonna get yelled at by everyone who's from new jersey but like it's sent set in 90s trenton new jersey like there is a certain jersey shore feeling to this entire book that like I know that Trenton isn't on the Jersey Shore, but like that's the image that I get of of all these people. And so I don't really take anybody in this book very seriously. Morgan's still nodding. I'm (laughs) in like the most like disapproving way. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't also, love this book. Let's just like say that I do not love this book. I think that, that is. Are, you don't need to like feel like you need to defend it. Yeah, I just <laughs> I I I think they're they're fun, and I do think that this series is worthwhile, and I think it gets way better as it goes along. Yeah. Now, as I mentioned, yeah, I almost kind of wanted to quit after the first chapter or two, but I did recognize as I got towards the end of the book, like okay, I can see how it would grow on you. I can see how. I bet this is exactly the kind of series that gets better and more aware. Yeah. <laughs> Grows as a person book series, uh, you know, a little bit later on. Were you just sitting there the whole time going like, why did Noelle recommend this to me? Noelle was really excited last time. Why was she so excited? No, I could see how like it. it is. I, when you just say fluff, I can see how it, it is genre fluff. It's yeah. not deep. It's not... <laughs> you know, thoughtful, insightful things that make you consider your place in the universe. It's not that. Yeah. I mean, she gets a gun. She has no idea how to use it. She has to get her cop buddy to come teach her how to use it. And then her grandma gets, first of all, Grandma Mazur is also a main part of these stories. And she is every single time hysterical. 
her grandma gets a hold of it and like shoots the gun and <laughs> like loads bullets into it and even though it's not loaded and like starts shooting things in their house and the dad in the story just like completely <sighs> like ignores <laughs> the grandma i find that hysterical grandma's yeah. hysterical i realize the whole point is it's to show that this character doesn't know basic gun safety and protocol <laughs> I get that's what we're uh-huh. supposed to do here, but I'm like, why the hell was she able to get a hold of your weapon? It's just why silly. you're just it- <laughs> you're taking it too seriously. I think that's uh. the problem. You're, you're trying to read this like some serious novel, and it's not. It's like it is slapstick '90s comedy. So I think part of what is hurting this book for me uh-huh. is that I have read the majority of the In Death series. What's have that? you read that? Mm-mm. Uh, it's by J.D. Robb, and a lot of things are similar in that you have, like, a female cop-type character who's taken down the bad guys, so she carries a weapon, and the very first book is her investigating a guy who turns out to not actually be the bad guy. He becomes the big romantic interest. Right. Like, th- there's a lot of similarities that I was picking up this as This is I not a new through. story. Yeah. <laughs> Which is totally fine. Totally fine. And I would even say that some of some of the, like grittiness of these are real world people and not all of them are going to be pleasant you are going to encounter people who are uh stealing things doing drugs selling inappropriate things doing sex work and a a myriad of just real life everything so there's all these elements that feel similar and yet every time i ran across a new thing i was like in death did it better <laughs> okay so which is not fair you it's know not fair, yeah. i don't know necessarily what my opinion would have been of the book without that comparison constantly in there yeah i don't know i'd be really interested if there's anybody else who has read the in death series and you know reads this for the podcast like what are your thoughts <laughs> on the like the comparison of these two hmm. yeah that would be interesting I, I just think, like, these aren't meant to be taken seriously. You're not supposed to be taking her... I mean, think about it in, like, if this was a movie and and it starred uh, Melissa McCarthy as Stephanie Plum, this is what would happen and no one would blink. There would be no gun safety discussion. Like, of course, that's how it would happen. Yeah, but again, it feels like it'd be, like, a 90s movie. Yeah, of course. This is a <laughs> 90s book. <laughs> Like you can't uh, you can't hold books from the '90s to the 2020s standard. Like that's just not fair. Yeah, it's not I, fair. Yeah, I I get it. I just I just deeply want to complain about it. Okay, that's fine. That's what this podcast is for. Another thing I did like I did like how there the various characters in the story, like uh-huh. uh, people who work for the same bounty hunter organization, who help her out and are like, yeah, sure, here I will show you where you need to go to learn yeah. more about guns yeah. and various other things like and i i appreciate that it's not just everybody being a completely unhelpful ass the yeah. whole way through even the guy who she's like bounty hunting who is kind of a jerk to her who played the train game when she was eight or whatever in that that's that's the whole tie-in here is that 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 sexual experience that she had when she was eight or this sexual discovery experience when she was eight is the guy that she's bounty hunting right now that she's yeah. supposed to catch. And she's actually even had more than one encounter with him and, in fact, has slept with him before. And now she's got to catch him. And he's a cop who has, like, gone rogue. So um, I, f- I feel like even he, who is kind of super misogynistic and, like, what he calls her, like, cupcake and stuff, which is, like, if someone called me cupcake, I'd punch them in the face. Like, even if my husband called me cupcake, I would be like, excuse me. Um <laughs> Don't call me cupcake. That's weird. <laughs> um, but like, whereas I'm sitting here calling my husband like noodle and potato. And no, I like those. those all the starchy. other foods. Starchy foods. Are, you know, I mean, are, I guess are cupcake. Cu- aren't cupcake starch? No. Sc- oh, they're gluten. I mean, they, they're just gluten. They're they're high in the glycemic index. Like, gotcha. as a, as a diet Starch, okay. Diet. Gluten, not okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No, yeah. that's fair. I just needed to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cupcakes just so like it seems demeaning. It's just no, really- I, I I do get that. Yeah. I understand. I'm I'm being silly, especially in a, in a '90s New Jersey sort of way. Even he is actually really nice to her and like protects her at the like cost of himself. There's also a running gag which they start in this ser- this series, which 
is that Stephanie will blow up a car in every single book. Like all 31 oh. books have her blowing up or wow. destroying a car in some way. <laughs> to be fair, and, she did not blow up the car. Yeah. Yes, that is true. And this this I think the problem was that this is the first book and so a car blew up and then it be, started becoming a thing or like another car accident happened in the second one and then there mm-hmm. was a pattern and then they were like, "Okay, let's run run with it." But a car does blow up. Anyway, he's pretty chill about her like taking his car, driving it around, you know, like he's he's he could be a, a bigger loser about this whole thing and he's not he's actually super helpful yeah i think it helps that there's that that we knew each other as kids and we like kind of barely dated for a moment we had in... sex once <laughs> yeah but yeah. The, there's that kind of familiar familiarity yeah. that you yeah. have with someone yeah. from knowing them throughout yeah. your entire lifetime yeah uh, and i think that that leads to some of his protectiveness and acceptance of like yeah, I'm going to take your car because you're on the run. You can't use it. Well, also, her family knows his family. And so, like, she went to see his mom. Like, <laughs> like it's like that. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's the part of this book that I think is hysterical. Like, Grandma Mazur, and she went to see his mom. And, like, you know, these things are, like, they happen in New Jersey. <laughs> Between I'm old Italian families. Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, me either. I have I have... I mean, I guess I've been to New Jersey and it was actually very pleasant and sort of beautiful in its own way. I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I just, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. good. Yeah. I, enough Real Housewives of New Jersey has taught me, like, I know, don't judge the world by New house, Real Housewives, but actually I lived in Orange County and no, everybody's actually like that. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, I'm going to get the hate mail for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. This I guess this is just bringing out all the opinions. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, so that those are the things you liked about it. Did you have any, like, places that you would like to visit or see in this book? But it's just spoilers for everyone. She does, like, Morelli and her, it's all fine. She actually she actually does catch him, which I find very funny. Like, Oh, yeah. He's working with her, and he thinks that he's going to willingly get brought in at the end, and she's going to collect the bounty money, and that's the, like, deal for her helping him. And, in fact, she actually just catches him and takes him in. Uh-huh, gotcha. <laughs> And he is pissed. And wraps the whole story up with that one catch, which is great. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I don't want to go see her family or their house. I don't want to see her apartment. But like, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe the marina. Okay. Is it, was it abandoned or was it because it was like the off season that nobody was there? Do you remember? I think it was, I think it was the middle of the night. Middle of, was it? Hmm. I feel yeah. like it was, I don't remember. I don't I'm, remember either. That's fine. <laughs> uh, just know that there was nobody there. And I, I remember thinking yeah. that was kind of weird. But yeah. yeah, like, I'd be down to see a marina. Sure. I would like to see a ranger. Hi. I do have to mm-hmm. say, this narrator killed this book for me. In a really? Way. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I read it the first time. So a ranger is definitely the rock in my head. Like, mm. that's the kind of beefy boy that I'm looking at and enjoying to, like... Mm, levels um there's a there's a guy in the harry dresden series that also reminds me of this guy Mm -hmm. the voice i had for him was more like the rock and this uh, eh, eh, all the voices were wrong and morelli morelli was like a really hot italian dude and the voice that she gave him was like no that's not really right so like I, I was not into her her interpretation also her voice doesn't match my Catherine hagel's closer I don't know. I guess I I was definitely fine with the narrator because mm-hmm. you didn't have a preconception in your brain like I did. Yeah, that definitely could mm-hmm. be there. There wasn't anything that made me go like s- ring me out of the story while mm-hmm. listening and go, oh no, this isn't right. Or yeah, like I, it was fine. I oh. I was okay with it. I didn't like the the extra long pauses between chapters. Oh my god! Or like sometimes in the middle of chapters, there was just like random. Yeah, because I I will often listen like with an earbud, and so my phone is some random ass place in my room, <laughs> yeah. not actually on me. So I kept wondering, like, oh, uh-huh. did my phone did I disconnect? Turn off, or like, am uh-huh. I receiving a call? Why did it stop? Like, mm-hmm. it, it take me a moment to realize it. Finally, <laughs> chapter thirteen uh-huh. or whatever would start. That's I, a very minor complaint. I listen with these Bose headphones, and if I get too far away, it goes connection to enormously large phone lost <laughs> so i know when i actually do it and then it, and then immediately goes connection to enormously lost phone or enormously large phone found <laughs> so at least i have that like 
note that it doesn't have the phone anymore. I'm curious <laughs> how you get how you name your phone. Oh, you can there's a like thing in the settings for naming your phone. You can also tell Siri what to call you, which is fun. Like your majesty or is Siri an Apple product, right? Oh yeah. Do you not have an Apple? No. Do you can you say like do you have a hey Cortana or hey whatever? I can say hey Google. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you might be able to set, have Google like have it say yes your majesty to everything you say like there Mm. might be a setting for that all right i'll have to investigate that later yeah it's fun all right (laughs) so morgan is off this topic already we don't want to talk about uh this book anymore (laughs) all right is there anyone you would you would like to have tea with so as much as i did not like grandma getting a hold of a gun uh in that incredibly unsafe scene you're right she does seem very like fun like fun sassy silly Mm -hmm. Like, just a good combo of things. So she seemed like she'd be someone really funny to eat. Like, at one of those restaurants that has, like, a bunch of little round tables out front. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. So you can watch people walking by and, Uh like, in a busy, touristy part of town. Uh Uh-huh. Because I feel like she would have the funniest things to say about people walking by Mm -hmm. and about, like, the businesses nearby. And, like, she she seems like a good, like, telling stories type person. I immediately, That'd be a fun I immediately set this cafe in Buenos Aires, just so you know, like that's Perfect. where you guys were when that happened. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, who would I want to hang out? I, you know, I really like Lula. Like, I love Grandma Madger. She's like one of my favorite people. Mm-hmm. There's this also this running gag about how later in the books, because I'm just going to assume you're not going to read these, that when you call for the cable company to come get you, they give you that four hour window, mm-hmm. and it's it's any time in the next like two weeks. And so there's a running gag that goes throughout these books where like sometimes she has a cable appointment and she has to have people come like sit in her house and wait for the cable guy if she has to go bounty hunt or whatever. So Uh. she gets Grandma (laughs) Madger to do it a lot. It's very funny. Perfect. But yeah, I like Lula a lot. Like she's hysterical. She's very funny. She also has an amazing commentary on the world that we find out later. And I would love to hang. I'm using so much of my knowledge of the series to kill this podcast. Which is fair. (laughs) No, I totally get that. It's it's impossible to separate your, yeah. your past experience of an entire series from your experience of the very first book. Like, it, yeah, I, I I get it. Yeah, you know, um, I would like to uh have other things with either Ranger or Morelli, whatever. Uh, oh, or Diesel. Diesel is the guy from the like <laughs> other thing. The Diesel series, which is the holiday editions, actually, he has um, supernatural abilities, too. So this does actually bring it even more genre-y into it. Um, and there's five of those books. And then he has a spinoff series as well. This woman is prolific in her writing. I, I, so out of curiosity, you, you did say that the series kind of grows up a little bit mm-hmm. as it continues on. Does it also match the technology? Yes. Like, do people eventually get cell phones and stuff yes it doesn't internet i'm not sure if it goes as far as like we are now i actually stopped reading them at like 20 so Mm -hmm. i haven't read the last six books so i don't i haven't like i'm six years behind essentially or whatever on this but yeah it was it was growing like people had cell phones and stuff and like okay things happen and like it doesn't grow up in the way like she's always bounty hunting she's always dropping things she's always like she's always stephanie plum messing up that's the thing about it is like I feel like Stephanie Plum fumbling through my life and getting help from my friends because I'm a somewhat personable person and like relying on that a lot. And so I bonded to her hard and I understand her like goofy, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it a go anyway attitude about everything. So I kind of love her. Like that's, I think that's what bonds me to these books, despite it's problematic nature but like yeah they don't get any less absurd or silly or what i mean Mm -hmm. her and lula are always blowing stuff up or like running around trenton like it's all unbelievable right so (laughs) but (laughs) they're all very fun and they they get less like i mean everybody all the boys try to be misogynistic but like she gets morally in line eventually and he stops that crap and even even ranger cuts it out so that's good yeah Uh, it's it is heartening to hear that like it it does grow up. Yeah. It does age with the times and probably the author's own experiences and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah, for sure. All right. We're going to go to the rating section now. And <laughs> I'm scared and a little bit excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your rating? Uh, I, I think I'm going to go straight to a one. 
Wow. Have you ever given a book this low of a score? I on this don't know that I have. I wish like we need to like chronicle this stuff. Like Yeah, that would require being way more organized. Yeah. We do have a spreadsheet. Like being, we do have spreadsheets, <laughs> yeah. but not not for that particular element. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. Uh I will give it a rating of three. Okay, wait. No, I'm gonna split my rating. If you were 35 or younger, this book is a, <laughs> this book is a two tops. If you were 35 or older, you might give it up to a three and a half. That's that's what I'm going. Like it's just fluffy. It's fun. It's not like it's not addicting. But if you if you need like a vacation read, I mean, I would just pick up book 26 honestly. Or you can actually read the spinoff series, like all the holiday ones. They're just one offs. So you don't need to have any background on the other mm, people. Mm-hmm. Although they do show up in the books, but they explain who they are and stuff. So. You could read one of those and it would probably be great. Nice. But yeah, uh, this book particularly would get maybe a three and a half, but it's, yeah, there's, it's problematic, as I said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Morgan, do you think this is a worth a reread? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, well, this is my reread of it. And I, I'm also going to say, nah, I'm good. I think like <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so that's saying something. Would you recommend this to a friend? No. Yeah. I would recommend in depth instead. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you add that to this, the thing and we'll review that and then we'll trash this right. book in that in that episode. Also. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. Stay yeah. tuned, guys. Okay. What is your reader rating? Oh, uh, what I thought of the narrator. Mm-hmm. Should I call yeah, this I mean, narrator rating? Narrator yeah, rating is such a hard thing to say. But what did I think of the narrator? I, I, I thought she was fine. There were different voices for different people. I five i guess i don't know whoa five okay the see the problem with this question is i'm going to rate almost every narrator five just and, a heads up and i'm gonna na- and na- i'm gonna um give them a one or a five <laughs> there you go i didn't like that person or i hate them <laughs> but yeah no i thought they were fine all right i hated this narrator i didn't hate her so much <laughs> that i wanted to put down the book so i can't give her a one because like i, I give her a two and a half like a two and a half star that's halfway. You are mediocre at best, ma'am. That's what I have to say about that. You know, and sometimes it's okay to be the mediocre person. Yep. That's fine. I actually, middling is just fine. <laughs> I'm, now I think I'm going to go for a thing where I'm going to see if I can say middling in every episode because I'm pretty sure that I have <laughs> at this point. All right. Uh, if there were other books in this series, would you want to read them? No. No. Uh, I, I, I just, do. No. I would so much rather read other things. Mm-hmm. I recognize that it might get better, but I don't feel like investing that time. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I will probably read the rest in the series again. I mean, I've only gone up to a certain amount, but I like I, thought I remember them being fun. And I'm, I'm willing to like give more of them a try when I have... The thing is, okay, so there's there's time, there's periods of time where when we're... You, there are periods of time when Mo- when Morgan and I are reading books in which one of us finishes before the other. And sometimes, like right now, okay, it's almost always Morgan that finishes first. Okay, but Morgan's moving right now, <laughs> which means I've sure. gotten to finish first like three times. And it <laughs> presents me with this amazing opportunity to actually listen to another book. So actually, while I was reading this, I was also reading the second Harry Potter book again. And so I could read one of these in between, which is, which is cool. So although... Should should I do another Harry Potter or Harry Dresden reread? Like that's a thing. Okay, I feel like we just read that series like oh, yeah. like three or four months ago. It was it not feels that like long it was ago. not very long ago. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you do you. Yeah. No, <laughs> maybe I'll reread but, these. I like rereads also because they go faster for me because like yeah, I, no, that's I don't have to pay attention and I can do even more outlandish things while I'm listening to my audiobook. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's do speed round. How are you feeling about that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's do the thing uh yeah it's not an answer to that <laughs> okay <laughs> if this book had skipped bail what crime would it have committed uh, oh i'm sitting there hmm. thinking the whole time that i'm reading this by the way guys morgan's gonna hate this book she's gonna hate it <laughs> <laughs> and then i asked her i'm like how 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 did you like the book and morgan was like we'll talk about it in the podcast and whenever she says that <laughs> i mean she hates the book like that's her tell and i'm i just all capped her back like you hated it <laughs> it, it it has its moments yeah but it uh, anyways okay. what crime did this book commit <laughs> i mean i've gotta say like the very first thing that comes to mind is sexual assault but that's yeah, okay. me connecting the big bad <laughs> okay with yeah. uh-huh. this book you know, no 
criminal negligence. Criminal negligence. Wow. That is a good description <laughs> because our main character is uh-huh. not competent. I'm sorry. <laughs> she Madame, is criminally she is neg- negligent for sure. Uh, I love it. If you were a bounty hunter, what would your weapon of choice be? I mean, gun's pretty, pretty classic one. Oh, okay. Although, you know what? A taser might be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do, go with that. Do you want a taser or a stun gun? Those are different. I, if we're going like Star Trek stun gun, I want that one. No, like the, between a. But act, you said okay. stun gun. Ice, ice. Okay, a stun gun is a thing with prongs that you push into someone that does them. A taser mm. has a little pistol thing with a line attached that goes like like a clown has with the punchy thing on it that like hits them, attaches I'm to stick them, with and my zaps answer. them. I want a Star Trek stun gun. <laughs> phaser. Okay. Okay. That's a phaser. That's not a stun gun. But okay. Shut up. <sighs> okay. Well, then this episode's <laughs> over. <laughs> we should just end it. <laughs> And we're done. <laughs> Just like, and we told you a story. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. All right. Mary, Boink, or Kill? Ranger, oh. Ranger, Morelli, or Eddie? Eddie is her cop friend. Oh, okay. And it was Mary, Kill, Boink. And then the, and the classic one. Okay. <laughs> the classic. She refuses to say Boink. Uh, I said Boink <laughs> because Boink is an actual word used in this book, it which is. I found very funny. Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's how silly and absurd this book is they use the word boink i guess morelli for sex oh okay i have a feeling it would be an interesting time okay i feel like the partner eddie Mm -hmm. i appreciate how he interacts with her and Mm -hmm. he seems like a reasonable thoughtful person like i'd marry him okay uh and then by ranger i would swap the ranger and morelli for sure because ranger ranger is bigger and hunkier and more like the rock I have a thing for The Rock, just in case anyone hadn't gotten that, picked up on my clues here. If you could change anything about this book, what would it be? <laughs> You're like all of it. <laughs> but if I could only change one thing. Yeah. I think what I would change is her process into becoming a bounty hunter. Because essentially, she was given the job, so to speak. She was given the file and told, go hunt down this guy. She was given the equivalent of, here's a gun, go figure it out. Yep. And I wish that she had instead, I don't know. I don't know if there's a bounty hunter course you can take. <laughs> I'm like, sure there is. Let me look. Probably. <laughs> but I, I wish that there had been some level of montage scene of her spending a week even. Okay, just so learning what she needed. Two things. One, she actually was handed a gun and told, go to figure it out. Ranger yeah. handed her a gun to do that. I mean, that... In every way, yes, that yes, is what in it every feels way. like. But there, there was kind of a montage scene because she did that thing with Eddie where she went to the range, and then he's like, "I want to see you back here every day this week," and she showed up every day that week and did the montage. But that's what I would change is that that oh. should have happened earlier before going before fucking up and getting herself into incredibly dangerous situations with zero experience or knowledge. Yeah, but then this book wouldn't be funny. <sighs> not funny anyway okay but i think whatever. it's hysterical actually <laughs> all right <laughs> this is the one i'm scared of three words to describe this book you can't use magic <laughs> criminally She's negligent like- comes back um, <laughs> assault uh-huh yeah like i'm th- those i think very well fit the book <laughs> okay i agree i agree actually hey morgan yes i'm what are we reading next? We're going to be reading Artemis by Andy Weir. Uh-huh. My apologies, dear sir. That's not how you pronounce your last name. Um, like but weird. this is the author for the book The Martian, which mm-hmm. was very popular a few years ago. And I, I really enjoyed the book. So are I'd these be books interested. related? I don't believe so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Notice how hesitant I am. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't get any sort of inclination that like, oh, the main character comes back or oh like i mm-hmm. i didn't get that impression but i could be 100 percent wrong so we'll find out okay i really enjoyed the martian the movie we own it chris watches it i would say fairly regularly like at least a couple times a year like it's that in interstellar at a back-to-back um which i think is very funny because matt damon's in both of them and he is the opposite guy in both of them uh and I've never read or read The Martian, and I would really like to. The only problem is that Will Wheaton is the reader for that, and I need a Will Wheaton break for possibly the rest of my life. So, 
<laughs> there is another so th- here's the thing there is another reader for that book actually but audible doesn't have it and it's really actually hard to get hold of you have to get like actual cds so mm. it's like an ebay like find thing and then i would actually have to get a cd player that could play the <laughs> cds because <laughs> i'm not sure that there is actually a C- no wait I have a DVD player in this house, so it must be able to play CDs too, right? Oh, I was going to say, can't you put CDs into your computer? No. I have a Surface. It has no Whoa. thingy. Right? Like, I don't have yeah, a Yeah, no, my computer, I can put CDs in it. Yeah, but my computer weighs two pounds. My computer weighs way more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can edit on the road, which is awesome. That is oh. fair. I cannot do that. Yeah. I need to be at a desk with, like, a million monitors and firmly yeah. not moving yeah i'm looking at you on a tiny 13 inch screen and, and clicking back and forth between you and the podcast outline that's how this is where i've got like all my <laughs> the control centers and mm-hmm. i like feeling like i'm at a control center yeah i mean i when i go to work like when i have a, a, a real job quote unquote i have three monitors and a giant tower and like i'm ready to go and yeah this is just my home situation, so I can take it traveling. All right. Homework for next time, guys. Uh, rate this book on your purchase platform or don't if you hated it or read it that you hated it. I don't know. Rate this podcast. How do you guys love Morgan bitching? Like, if you want us to read more books that Morgan hates because oh, this episode was hysterical, leave us that. comments below. <laughs> There's nothing like me bitching about The Witcher, though. Also, lastly, follow us on Instagram at ladies who genre, all one word, and that will tell you what our upcoming books are if you don't have instagram you can still look us up to find out that information so I told you a story, a tale.